Hi, I'm Nick Braun. Today we're going to talk about the quantum simulation of physical systems with two Qiskit modules, nature and opflow. Physicists like to describe everything in terms of something called a Hamiltonian, which is related to the energy of a system and describes the dynamics, or the way a system changes in time, by plugging that into the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, pictured here. We can set h bar equal to zero, drop the hats, and omit the explicit reference to time, and formally solve this by integrating it and seeing that our wave function psi is going to evolve from its initial state psi naught by a time evolution given by e to the minus i h t. We call this unitary time evolution by u from an initial state psi naught. We know quantum circuits are also implemented by unitary operations called quantum gates. So then the question is, can we use quantum computers to simulate how quantum states evolve in time? The answer is yes. Say we've got a quantum system out there in this cloud or something. Then suppose we know it evolves from a state phi at time t equals zero to time t under the time evolution operator given by u. Then suppose we also had a quantum simulator we could prepare in the state psi at time t equals zero and evolve it by u prime to time t and then measure it. Then we could learn about the system phi by simulating the state psi with the quantum computer. Take for example the simulation of electronic systems. Electrons are types of fermions, which obey commutation relations different from that of qubits. We can write the Hamiltonian of a molecule, say, as the sum of overlap integrals given by these h's and fermionic creation and annihilation operators. Qubits obey different commutations, the same ones as spins. But yet we can map the fermionic operators to the spin operators in a systematic way, and then we have a qubit Hamiltonian that behaves like the molecular Hamiltonian. One of these mappings, there are several, allows us to write the fermionic operators in terms of the Pauli matrices, and thus a way to encode electronic quantum problems on a quantum computer. The cool thing is that we can do this easily with Qiskit Nature. If you haven't already, install Qiskit Nature. You can do this inside the notebook itself or inside the Conda environment associated with your IPython kernel as discussed in the install videos. Looks like I have it installed already. Next, we'll load some libraries from Qiskit Nature we'll be using. As an example, we'll simulate an excitation on a five-site tight binding model. This is a model of a single electron on a chain given by hopping energies tau sub i. And we'll put a defect on that chain. Let's use the fermionic op class from Qiskit Nature to collect the hopping terms. Each creation operator is given by a plus with a subscript corresponding to the cited axon, and each annihilation operator is similarly specified with a minus. We pick five sites to model and generate the Hamiltonian this way. Now suppose we have the same tau for between all sites except defects which have tau sub d. We can print out the Hamiltonian we generated. First, build a qubit converter to convert our fermionic Hamiltonian to a poly Hamiltonian via the jordan wigner transformation, although we could easily pick another transformation. Introduce parameters tau and tau sub d corresponding to our defect and put it in our Hamiltonian. We'll choose our defect to be at site 2 and build our jordan wigner transformed Hamiltonian. Now we have our poly Hamiltonian after the jordan wigner encoding. And we can see the coefficients are given in terms of i, x, y, and z, the poly matrices. Note that the order of operators is switched now, such that qubit 0 is the least significant digit and is now on the right. Once we have the poly Hamiltonian that we can implement on our quantum computer, we have many choices of which algorithm to use, depending on what we'd like to measure. If we're looking for the ground state of a molecular configuration, we might choose the variational quantum eigensolver. Check out my colleague Owen Lockwood's video, VQE Zero to Hero, to learn more about that. If we're looking for the spectrum of our Hamiltonian or dynamical correlation functions, we might try control time evolution by auxiliary qubits. Or we might even try spectroscopic techniques to interact the qubits undergoing evolution with probe qubits. In the following example, we'll measure the qubits directly to see how an excitation propagates along a chain of electron sites. In all these cases, we must first prepare the initial state of the qubits representing our simulated system. We'll do the following within Qiskit Opflow, a module within Qiskit Terra, to manipulate qubit operators and build quantum circuits from them. In Qiskit Opflow, the caret symbol corresponds to a tensor product. We'll prepare the initial state psi naught, which corresponds to an excitation on qubit zero. Then we can build our time evolution operator u equals e to the minus i h t by simply exponentiating it. This is needed in most simulation algorithms, but not necessarily VQE. Since we want to measure the wave function density, we'll prepare measuring operators n corresponding to the number operator in the poly basis that gives us the occupation observable. We perform a jordan wigner transform on the number operators to get their corresponding poly operators. Finally, build the expectation values of the number operators. In opflow, 
the at symbol corresponds to an operator composition. And choose the parameters for our simulation. First, we'll use Opflow to calculate the results of our simulation exactly. Later, we'll show how to approximate this with a quantum computer. Import poly expectation and define the time range from 0 to 10. For each of our expectation values, calculate the measurement operators by converting them and then evaluating them at each desired time step. Next, let's plot a color map of our results. Here we can see our excitation on site 0 at time 0 propagates along the chain and being both transmitted and reflected from the defect, followed by mostly constructive interference back at site 2 around time 6. The lightness of the color gives the wave function probability, so we can indeed see that we are observing a quantum mechanical effect. Typically, we can't implement time evolution of the whole Hamiltonian on a quantum computer. Additionally, terms of the Hamiltonian may not commute with each other. We use a technique called trotterization to break it up into smaller pieces, each of which does not commute that badly with each other by taking smaller time steps. In this way, trotterization is an approximate decomposition that allows us to do simulation on our quantum computer, and we can always increase the order and or the number of repetitions for desired accuracy. Of course, this could be balanced by the errors of running longer circuits themselves. We can easily perform a Suzuki trotter decomposition by importing poly trotter evolution and Suzuki from Qiskit Opflow. By passing our time evolution operator into the poly trotter evolution converter, we can get our trotterized operator out, and we can inspect the circuit by using the two circuit command. We can further decompose the circuit to look deeper inside. and so on. Or we can just transpile it into qubit operations we're familiar with. Note that the circuit is just for a single trotter step. Let's run these simulation circuits on the error-free IBM Q CASM simulator. First, we'll load our account. Now we'll choose five trotter steps and a second order Suzuki trotter decomposition. We'll define our trot circuit as a quantum circuit on insights, five in this case, and we'll excite qubit zero by doing an X gate before composing our trotter operation circuit into it, followed by a measurement on all the qubits. Then for each time in our time range, we must bind those parameters to our circuits so that we get a series of circuits, one for each time step. Let's look at the last circuit we constructed corresponding to time t equals 10. As we can see, this is a rather long circuit, which is why we're running this on a noiseless quantum simulator instead of a real backend. We'll then extract the probability for each site to be occupied by going through our results and summing the counts where the qubits are excited. And again, we'll plot the results and get a qualitative agreement with what we produced before. One of the challenges of doing quantum simulation on noisy quantum computers is the trade-off between accuracy from the number of trotter steps and the noise accumulated from running a longer depth circuit. In this video, we've learned how to express a fermionic Hamiltonian and transform it into a poly Hamiltonian via Qiskit Nature. We then excited a qubit to simulate how an electron wave function would propagate along a five-site chain using a quantum computer with Qiskit Opflow. Let us know in the comments what else you'd like to see explored with Qiskit modules. I've been your host, Nick Braun. Thanks for watching.